a lot of practices need one sort of business or the other. They need help with consulting. Really getting to know everyone, networking, really helps with the smaller practices. When you go into a practice and they're not doing that, right away are red flags to me that something needs to be fixed and it's broken. Hello and welcome back to Click TV. Here we talk to businesses and discuss the ways they leverage technology for business success. My name is Julia, and my guest today is Amy Thomas, president of Limelight Business Partners and managing partner with Sublime Medical Billing Partners. Welcome, Amy. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me here today. Of course. Um, so tell me a little bit about your role, Amy. Um, when you first started, was there something that was more challenging than you expected? Yeah, so I started this company during the height of the pandemic. It was first Limelight Business Partners, which is more of a consulting management company of medical practices. But I also wanted to get into the role of billing, which is why then started Sublime Medical Billing Partners, because I wanted to keep the two separate. A lot of practices need one sort of business or the other. They need help with consulting. They need someone to come in see what's going on and see what's broken, try to come up with resolutions. Whereas some practices need just the billing services, they have everything else under control. So I wanted two separate platforms to get that going. All right, so let's talk about small businesses. You are a small business that serves other small to medium sized businesses. Um, so how can your business help serve these businesses? Yeah, so I think because I have experience going into different small practices and looking and seeing what's going on, I know going in ahead of time, if something is broken, I can be like, oh, well, let's try this. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Um, also, a big resource that I use and utilize is Maryland MGMA, which is the Medical Group Management Association. They help practices with all different areas, um, you know, get help in, in different focuses that they need help with. For instance, IT services, if they need help with consulting, if they need any help with sort of analytics to their system. We have all sorts of sponsorships with like EHR um, and practice management systems. So if we go into somewhere and they're like, you know, I'm really looking for something, we can give them re the resources because we have all these different groups together to reach out and get a couple quotes, estimates, dig into things, what works for them, what doesn't. And also just the networking opportunity as well. Um, a lot of times, if it's a specific practice, I would know other practices or the, you know, Maryland MGMA would get them in touch with other practices just like them. So really getting to know everyone, networking, um, really helps with the smaller practices. I know it helped with me. If there is something that I'm not familiar with, I can reach out and look at all the different resources we have pinned already. Yeah. And then I'm able to, you know, come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, networking can work wonders sometimes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's very good advice. Yeah. So what are some typical signs of when a business should seek out help from a company like Limelight or Sublime? Yeah. So one of the biggest things I see is with the billing aspect. If they're not getting paid by payers, like different, like uh, like your Blue Cross, your Cigna, your Aetna, I want to figure out why. So when I come in and look at practices, I want to see who your big payers are and who isn't paying as much. Is there a credentialing issue? And, you know, sometimes when things are not paying where they should be, that's usually the first step right there. Like it's everything taken care of with that baseline. Another thing is checking their EHR or practice management system. Are they reconciling their payments? Mm. It When you go into a practice and they're not doing that, right away are red flags to me that something needs to be fixed and it's broken. Just because that check's going into the bank account of the business doesn't mean you're getting paid for everything. You're not working the accounts for the patients. Yeah. You wanna be a really good practice for your patient. You want them to come back. Mm -hmm. You wanna make sure that the EOB that they're receiving at home matches what's in your system. There's been practices that I've gone into that don't even send out statements. 
And so wow. the patients don't know what they owe. So also running reporting, I'm really focused on reporting. So if I run an AR report, which I'm, I'm trying to see like how much is coming in, where it's being put, you can't run an AR report if you're not reconciling within your system. Mm -hmm. So even just teaching the practice how to do that, which is more of consulting of limelight, mm -hmm. but because you have the, the billing of sublime, you can go backwards then and help have resolutions to the practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if a business were not doing reconciliation mm. and, and stuff like that, they should definitely seek help. Absolutely, so, yeah, because okay. you're, you're not knowing the potential of what you can get. Mm -hmm. And for, for example, with, with if you send out a claim that is only $80, but it's really paying like 120, that payer is only gonna pay 80. Mm -hmm. So you need to look and see against everything that's out there. Yeah. Are you getting the most money? And also, it, what practices forget as well, because they'll be like, oh, we'll just write off the $30 copay. Never do that. That actually is a breach of your contract with your payer. Even though it's like a friend of the family or whatnot, do not do that. That's that's a breach of your contract. And if these payers find out that you are doing that, they can audit you and then you're going down a whole legal road yeah. that you don't want to go down. <laughs> Nobody does. Compliance <laughs> and a whole nother exactly. thing. Go exactly. Exactly. What has been the best use of technology to help you succeed? I'm going to do the most simplest answer and it's just the internet. Okay. Back where I previously used to work, I had a whole team of employees work 100% remote. This was before the pandemic. And actually when everything, everyone had to go home and work, everyone was scrambling because they're like, oh, I need to go to the office and such. I actually did webinars in the beginning of the pandemic about how to manage remote employees because I was so used to it. That's awesome. You got to be able to trust people that are working for you but more importantly, the analytics of are they being productive? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because when you're in an office, you can you can see if people are yeah. working hard, they're picking up the phone. But you gotta have the analytics to see how many accounts they touched, what they're doing within the accounts, how many phone calls are being made if you're doing something that sort. You need software technology that gives you back the analytics. Yeah. And I think that was most successful with, you know, with both of my companies, they are all 100% remote, mm -hmm. but my employees know right off the bat that I have the analytics to check and see mm -hmm. if you are being productive. Yeah. And also if, if there is like a bad day or something, I'm like, what happened? Usually it's like an internet or they would let me know, mm -hmm. you know, I had to restart my router. Right. Like things do happen. It's just as simplistic as internet because what did we do before that? Right. You had to show up. Right. I mean, I remember when with a credit card, out. you had to slide and now you can <laughs> like literally tap, yeah. tap your iWatch oh and pay God. for something. Yeah. So we've come a long way. And I think that, you know, there's employees that can't work remote as well. Mm -hmm. And they actually enjoy going to the office and such. I am more productive in my home, own home. I know that for me. When I used to go to the office, you get distracted, people talk to you, the yep. water cooler talking things. I want to work. I'm a very hard worker, always have been. That was the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. So being at home, I can do the most productivity. That's with. great. And that's wonderful now that we have like the technology to do that. Exactly. To see all the, that everyone's still able to work hard yeah. at home. Analytics are everything. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And we're, we're implementing a system just like that too. Uh -huh. um, so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So one more question for you. I want to know what's motivating your team right now. I like to do fun things outside the box. Okay. I think there is a time for work and there is a time for play. Mm -hmm. So I do like to think of things that are like unique, not just the happy hour mm -hmm. or the, I think it's insulting when like the whole pizza box thing when it <laughs> happens. You can't really do that anyways when you're all remote. It's not like yeah. at that pizza party. Um, but like, I always found that insulting. It's like, oh, I got lunch like it's a pizza and I'm like wow okay but I I made I, I did so much sales this month and I get a pizza 
I like to really connect with my employees and get to know them. Some people will disagree with that, that you shouldn't know their personal life. But to me, I need to know, and I'd like to know if, if they're having a hard time, a hiccup in their life, nobody's ever having like the best day 365 days a year. Yeah. So one of the best things I did for my team, I think personally, is for our Christmas party, we went to um, Top Golf. Okay. And that was great cool. because it was like sports interactive. Um, you know, I golf a lot. That's like a huge hobby of mine. And just to get other people out, some never even swung a club before. Yeah. Getting their um, pretty easy to like learn though. That's something. It is. It is. I yeah. It, I mean, it's... if you swung a baseball bat, you can do it. Mm -hmm. So the spouses though too. Like I like to have the family come as well. Oh, good. Um, I I just like that camaraderie and stuff. I, I I like to do things that are like I guess more athletic than just like eating the pizza or the happy hour. <laughs> Um, but that was a really good time. I, I like that. And then also I like to do education as well. And I'll try to wrap that into like, like a trip. I'll be like, oh, there's a conference here. Let's all go and educate. And then, you know, maybe get some ice hockey tickets as well. Mm -hmm. Always a good time. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. I love that. Those are all wonderful ideas and maybe we'll try to implement them into our team yes so cool okay that's all the questions i have for you was there any like websites or information you wanted to tell to the audience yeah um so if anyone has any questions for me directly um the email address is info at limelight b as in business p as in partners.com that would all come to me so if anyone has any questions at all um, you know, of course I would do a free consultation. If anyone has any questions about their practice, I would love to come in and just take a look, mm. see what's going on. I'm so used to going into practices and seeing what's broken, like right away and be like, okay, this could be the issue. And here's what I suggest to fix it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, that's how you can reach out to me. Okay. Directly. Great. Mm -hmm. great. Thank you. All right. That's been awesome having you here. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.